pull this switch off of the back here. There we go. And there's that spring I was just telling you about. You can see it inside of there. You can see the contacts here. So whenever that spring uh, is pulled up by the switch, uh, these make contact on the inside here. And that's how it powers on. The contacts are slightly worn. That's also interesting. If I had to guess this has been in service for about three or four years, this grinder. on da That's daily use, so. And on the side here, I pulled these uh, long leads. They were in the length down there. And I believe these are the brushes. And I already pulled one of the brush springs off. There's the other one. Should be able to pull those out. There we go. Have a look at the brush. Or one part of it. I'm sorry. These are, I don't think these are technically called brushes. Um, but they act as one. Oh. All right, now we're in the guts of it. Let me get a flashlight here so you can see the stator. All right, so here we have the stator end of the electric drive motor. The stator is the stationary portion of the windings. And you can see the copper windings. Um, this has to do with the polarity, I'm not entirely sure why. We'll pull that out of there in a second. That's a T15 Torx screw there. And here's the rotor. Um, it has that bearing I tried pulling off before on the end. These bearings are Z809 China. <laughs> um, that's the one on the tail end. Now if we go towards the face it seems like it has a rubber seal on it, so it's probably a higher quality bearing. This rear one just has the pressed in cup as a seal. This front one is USA made. It is, let's see if I can focus in on that. Oh, it's an NSK. NSK 600,000 USA. And it has a seal, so. You also have this fan uh, cooling. And you have the rotor windings. And now, these individual pieces here are called laminations. And how it works is they're individually isolated and stacked together and when you run a wire through it you create magnetic fields in each direction and there's a certain flux which is the the field basically that causes it to to rotate in one direction uh, because of the magnetic force in the current running through these wires this rear portion here is uh, where those brushes I guess you'd call them contact they're the contact points basically and they distribute the voltage um, relative to which direction it's spinning to these windings now that's just my basic knowledge of it you can see they they're also individually isolated here so as it travels it'll send it through a different set of windings so each one of these is um, if we were to count all these teeth here and divide it by two, that would be how many paths of windings we have through here. Um, because you have, uh, you know, each end of your current travel, so. But this bearing and this bearing honestly seem all right. This is like a skateboard wheel quality bearing. 
So I believe our failure path was the grinding wheel teeth. And it just got worse and worse as they wore until they flattened out. And that in turn probably threw out this bearing in here. I'm going to try to press that out real quick. Oh, that's interesting. It's very interesting. <clears throat> so what just happened is the casting failed and the the drive spur gear or the 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 uh, worm gear failed. Now it's obvious that it would fail like that because of the impact I gave it, but wow. That just shows you the brittleness of uh, this casting, which is probably a, a stainless, very cheap stainless casting, but I'm not entirely sure on that, as well as this cast component here. So the, that worm gear is actually cast. Alright, that bearing started to move, but I'm not even going to waste my time on it. Let's tear apart the stator housing. This is a T15 Torx. Oops. And as you can see here, the stator also has individual laminations, if you look really closely. And they're welded along this seam, and that seam, this seam. And you can see the, the, the two copper loops here which I'm not an electrical engineer so I don't really understand exactly how this is designed but uh, that's the basics of it for you I'm actually going to see if I can pull the copper out of here just out of curiosity maybe see what kind of scrap value we can actually get out of this so to get the copper out you'd have to continually pass this across and across and it's basically not worth the time so if anyone knows if uh, this stator housing with the wire is, is worth anything, as well as this rotor, uh, let me know. I'll be curious to hear about that. I doubt the laminations are, even though they're... I'm not sure. They have a good weight to them, so... Decent amount of copper here. Alright guys, here's the parts I ended up getting out of this grinder. This is merely just an exercise in curiosity. If you guys like videos like this, let me know. I have uh, a lot more tools. I have circular saws, I have reciprocating saws, and uh, and um, impact drills. Um, and I can do some teardowns on that if you're curious to see what's inside of these things. Thanks for watching. Uh, please comment, rate, and subscribe.